Hey everyone, it's Robert Hall, and in today's video, we're going over the behind the scenes of this shoot with model Emily. Well, model slash retoucher slash photographer slash dress rental company owner, Emily Crombez. We started this session out with an all white, clean athletic apparel look. Now, because we had a white sports bra, white leggings, and white sneakers, I wanted to make sure that we had really even lighting throughout just so that everything retained that really bright look. So for this setup, there's a 31 by 47 inch softbox boomed overhead on the extension head of a Godox 8600 Pro. There's two 8600 Pros, both with 12 by 56 inch easy lock strip boxes on either side to provide edge lighting and fill in cast shadows from the key light. The key light on the left is a Godox 8200 Pro inside the Provence 70.2 inch parabolic reflector with diffusion to function as a regular softbox. Finally, I have a single V-flat from V-flat World to bounce a little bit of fill light onto Emily's back, which is primarily to keep the dark side of the leggings nice and bright. Now for some of these images, we went horizontal, like where she is stretching on the ground, and I wanna bring up a little point about compression here, because this is a big limitation of working across the short side of my studio, which is 25 feet and seems like a lot of space, but in this situation, the subject is pulled pretty far from the background so I can kind of light that background independently Independently, which means she's you know 10 feet away from the wall and that means I don't have much room in between her so I'm forced to use a rather wide angle lens in this case a 50 millimeter and because I'm so close to my subject that means there is very little background compression and the result is I don't have very much clean background area on either side of my subject and the open area on either side of the background is completely visible in the horizontal frames and if I want to fill the frame with clean background that means I'm gonna have to do some work in Photoshop which isn't really really complex, but is a time suck. Now this session was right when we opened up the studio and at the time our other background dropper wasn't available. Have a problem. Huh. Ah! But I'm definitely moving my gray backdrop from that side of my studio to this side of my studio. That way I have the 50, 60 feet that I need to work with to get a clean background, even though it's only nine feet, because I'm gonna be further away, I can compress that image more, showing less of the background area and therefore not having to do any of that work in Photoshop. Now we use the same setup for an e-commerce look of this full length winter jacket. Depending on the hood position and the position of Emily's hands and eyes, in some of the photos it looks like she belongs in a street fashion catalog and in other photos, it looks like she wants to sell drugs to children. After a few more shots with the jacket, she quickly changed into a dress and we used the same lighting setup that we started with. With her first three outfits being black and aiming for a catalog or lifestyle feel, we really didn't feel the need to change much in terms of lighting. But when Emily brought out her final look of magenta athletic wear, it was time to change some things. I swapped my slate gray seamless backdrop for a color called Flame by Superior. It's in between magenta and dark red, but it worked perfectly with this clothing. Since we already had a very soft fitness look at the beginning, I decided to opt for harder light this time around. I tore down the Profond 70 inch and put a 20 inch deep para in its place. I kept the diffusion off to keep the light as hard as possible. Without any diffusion, this softbox really kicks some light output. It's actually brighter than most of my long throw reflectors. You can see in the behind the scenes that I have a grid on it as well because I I wanted to reduce the width of this light as much as possible, but I can guarantee it's barely making any impact since the light isn't diffused. I tore down the overhead softbox that was lighting the background, letting the background become a lot darker than the subject. This had an added benefit of making the background match well with the clothing, whereas the floor with a little bit of light on it matched well with the accent color in the clothing. I kept the two strip lights on the side and even brightened them up a bit. Now that we have harder light with more contrast in the front, the edge lighting is a lot more visible. I then dialed in the key light output until I had some nice specular highlights to give the appearance of being a little bit sweaty from working out. Now, Emily is a fantastic model, but where she really shines is in the BTS photos. Now we did a few intense looks with this lighting just standing up and even worked with a kettlebell for a bit. I briefly threw in an 8400 Pro with a projection snoot to create this slash, but I quickly found it distracting and turned it off. We used the setup for some seated portraits as well, where I got quite close to increase the distortion and accentuate the shoes. Now, onto the shot that made the thumbnail. Back when I was setting up for the switch to magenta, I tested the output of just my rear lights and got this image. I love the result without a key light, so I brought it back for this lunging pose at the end. All we have here is the two strip boxes lighting the portrait, with a V-flat providing a tiny bit of fill. The reason for the fill is not so much exposure, the whole purpose is to get a little bit of flash lighting on the subject just to freeze her because otherwise it would only be the lingering ambient light that lights her and we'd probably see a little bit of motion blur in the front of the portrait. So having a little bit of fill just keeps everything nice and sharp. Once all the lighting was dialed in, we just had to try the pose a few times, this lunging pose, and make sure we got the timing right. And there 
there was also a very interesting thing with the lighting because it's only a hair light lighting her that her arm was blocking her face for the pose and all we had to do was make her angle her arm away which doesn't really show up in the camera but it provides a window for that lighting to get through and light her face giving us this final result. One mistake I made here is not being precise enough with my rear lights. I should have made them the exact height, the exact angle, and pointed them both to the same center point. This would have given me a perfect triangle of light fall off in the background, but instead I had to adjust it in post. All right guys, so that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this behind the scenes. Make sure to hit the like if you did and subscribe and turn on notifications if you wanna see my future videos. If you wanna see something specific in the studio, then make sure to leave that in the comments. Take it easy.